Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us again for another episode of Inner City Cultural League After School Program. I'm Ms. Kristen, and we have been talking about um, lessons that I have seen in my trustee life skills training manual. This gives us all of the life skills training information, resources, tips, and tricks that we can use when dealing with potentially difficult situations as we grow up. And this is by Dr. Gilbert Botvin. We've spoken about tobacco use, we've spoken about alcohol use, we have spoken about self-esteem, confidence, assertiveness, things like that. Today, we're gonna to talk about marijuana. We're gonna talk about the myths versus the realities of marijuana. Some people call it the wacky tobacco. Some people call it weed reefer. There's so many different names for it, but um, we're going to learn a little bit about what it is and what it does to you, the effects that it has on you. So as, as stated in the life skills training, what is marijuana? Marijuana is a dried mixture of leaves, vines, seeds, and stems of a hemp plant called cannabis sativa. It's generally used to make homemade cigarettes called joints or blunts that are smoked. What does marijuana do? Marijuana affects the person smoking it within minutes. It produces a high or a state of intoxication similar to alcohol. Some people say it's similar to alcohol. Some people say it's the exact opposite of alcohol. So it all depends on how your body is, but it does give you some type of intoxication that um, you can't really control how, like the state of your mind, how you're feeling at that moment, you can't really control it. So some people, when they smoke marijuana or weed, they'll feel like they're drunk, like they're kind of like not really in their right state of mind. Their, their movements are kind of wacky or their speech is different. Um, some people get extremely slowed down and it looks like they're kind of like in a sleep walk type state so their their eyes are like real drowsy and they're talking real slow and they're laughing at stuff that's not even funny so it kind of makes you act a little bit goofy like like alcohol does um but it does a lot more than alcohol does to get you high scientists have discovered that marijuana causes your heart to beat faster and work harder. So that's one thing. If you guys remember when we talked about alcohol, it does kind of stimulate your heart a little bit more. And um, tobacco, it makes you kind of makes your heart beat faster. So if you're combining, some people like to combine marijuana in um, like a cigarette or a cigarillo or a cigar wrap. And that has the tobacco in it as well as the marijuana. So now you're getting twice the horrible effects. You're getting the horrible effects from the marijuana and you're getting the horrible effects from the tobacco leaf that you're smoking it in. Um, it raises some people's blood pressure. That's not good if you like to eat um, fried foods, foods that have sodium. Your, heart, your blood pressure is already gonna be a little bit higher. And then a lot of times, um, genetically, your blood pressure can be higher just because of the family that you were born into. So you already have some things kind of working against you. If you if you have high blood pressure running in your family, you don't want to use marijuana or smoke cigarettes, things like that. That can make it even worse. Again, it makes your hands less steady. So this is something with smoking tobacco, with drinking alcohol, your steadiness is not going to be as on point as if you're sober. Um, that can harm if you're an artist or if you have to be very steady with the job that you're working, that can definitely affect that. It can cause people to feel sleepy. So a lot of times when people smoke marijuana, they've said that it has the effect of making them feel lazy or sleepy. Like if you, if you, um, there's a song, there was a song out, I remember, and it was, it wasn't something like I was gonna do such and such and then I got high. So it's like, all right, you plan on doing stuff, you plan on getting up and being productive and having a great day, getting all this stuff done, knocking out all your to-do list things. And all of a sudden you smoking and now you just wanna lay back and now you got the munchies, so you eating food. We already know how when you start eating food and you get the munchies, how that affects your waistline. We, we talked about that too. 
We don't want that. So not only are you eating a whole bunch of junk food because you got the munchies, you have something in you that's like, ooh, eat this, eat that, eat everything. Now you're like eating everything and then you want to lay down and go to sleep. That's not good. You didn't get anything done. And um, again, your clothes don't fit like how you would want them to fit. So we don't want to do that. Another thing is it makes it unsafe to drive a car or operate machinery. Um, a lot of times your reaction time is off when you smoke marijuana, your perception, your depth perception is off as well. So you can be driving down the street and you see a car coming towards you. You're not gonna be as quick with your reaction time as you would if you're sober. You're also not going to be able to um, say, okay, well, if you're coming up to a stop sign and you have to stop at a line, there's a white line in the road, you're probably gonna go over the white line or you're gonna stop all the way back from the white line. Again, some goofy type behavior that you really don't wanna, you don't want people looking at you like, yo, what's wrong with that person? They can't drive. And you, if you have to operate machinery for your job, your job, you can definitely lose your job. That's another thing. A lot of places they do drug testing. So you don't wanna have marijuana in your system if you're trying to get a job or if you're trying to keep a job because that will definitely hurt your chances. Um, it makes it hard for you to pay attention. So if you're smoking marijuana, you can't really focus as much. Your mind is kind of going this way and that way and every which way. And I know if you're anything like me, I have a little bit of a difficult time focusing anyway. I don't need anything getting in the way and making it even more difficult for me to focus on something. Um, you, it makes it harder for you to learn new things because again, your mind is going all over the place. Your, your mind is here and there and everywhere and you can't learn new things as, as easily as you can if you were sober. It makes it hard to remember things because once again, you're not focusing, so you can't remember what you just heard because you, weren't, you were half paying attention. Um, it makes some people feel nervous and confused. A lot of times I have heard that when people smoke marijuana, they get paranoid. So it makes them feel like hyper anxious, super, um, concerned with everything that's going on around them. They're like, oh my gosh, I feel like this person's staring at me. Oh my gosh, these people are talking about me. Oh my gosh, I feel like I look so weird. And they're probably so anxious that they really do look really weird. So you don't want to have that feeling. You don't want to have that perception for other people to have of you. Like what's wrong with that person over there sitting in the corner, all crouched over, looking paranoid and scared. Um, and then another thing is it makes you feel depressed. So again, when you have that hyper level of anxiety and nervousness, you're gonna start thinking about everything that you could possibly worry about. You're gonna start thinking about everything negative that could possibly happen. And you're going to feel, start to feel depressed or down or sad. And it's really difficult to get out of that depressive state if once you get into that depressive state. So like they say, um, some drugs are either stimulants or depressants. Marijuana tends to be a depressant. So it kind of depresses the people when you start to smoke, you get tired, you get lazy, you get hungry and you get depressed. That's not, to me, that's not, it's not worth the high that you can get. You can get the same type of energetic high if you go to the gym and it's good for you. So we don't wanna, we don't wanna get high and be depressed. Like what's the point in that? That's defeating the whole purpose of getting high to me anyway. If I, if I wanna feel a high, I wanna do some breathing exercises and feel better after I do it. I wanna go work out and feel better after I do it. Um, by the way, we have Zumba on Tuesday evening, 6.30 PM, shameless plug for exercising. It's a lot of fun, great music. <laughs> So last thing I want to talk about is the permanent damage to the body that marijuana can have. Um, some of the effects marijuana can be permanent. Um, it, could, it definitely contains carbon monoxide and tar, which is some of the things that um, tobacco contains as well. So like I said, when you're smoking it, a lot of times people will smoke marijuana and they'll roll it up in a tobacco leaf. So you're getting like double the negative effects from that. It causes health problems. Um, it affects people's breathing. If you like to talk a lot, like I do, you don't want something affecting your breathing because then you can't really talk as much. Um, it also contains uh, certain chemicals that can cause cancer. So marijuana people will say, oh, marijuana is just a plant. It's healthy, it's natural. No, not necessarily because a lot of times when people are selling marijuana, it's not just the plant, they're adding chemicals in it. So it's kind of like additives that are added into it. 
So you're not just smoking a plant. It's not just healthy for you. You have to be very, very careful with everything you put in your body, whether it's food or anything else. Definitely with drugs, marijuana is considered a drug. I know sometimes um, in certain places it's legal, it's still considered a drug. And so I want you guys to stay away from that so you can be as healthy as possible, okay? So next time we're gonna talk about different types of advertising. So there's certain things, like I said, marijuana has become legal in some states and for some uses, um, alcohol is legal for people over the age of 21. Tobacco is legal for people over the age of 21. So they do, companies do want to advertise and they do want to kind of get their product out there so people can buy their product. But sometimes the way that they're advertising it is not truly what's in the product. So it's called, it's called false advertising or um, advertising that could be attracting the wrong types of customers, i.e. children or people that shouldn't be putting these things into their body. So we're going to talk about that next time. Until then, stay away from the wacky tobacco. Stay away from anything not good for you. If you want to get high, go exercise, go get some fresh air, go walk in nature, do some breathing exercises. All of that releases endorphins in your brain that actually makes you feel high and it makes you feel good and it will be a much, much healthier high and it'll be a long-term lasting effect that can definitely impact your life in a beautiful, wonderful way. All right, so I will talk to you guys next time. Until then, take care of yourselves. Welcome everyone to another exciting episode of Cyber Speaks at Inner City Cultural League. I am Mr. Wayne. Uh, I'm sorry we weren't here last week. We had some other things that we needed to freshen up on so to be able to bring you these great lessons. But two weeks ago, we discussed the automatic plant warning system. And one of the things that I, and as I explained myself, Ms. Crickson explained at that time, it, it automatically checked the moisture of the soil and water the plants in accordance. But what made it do all that? What made that even possible? That's what we want to talk about today. What made all of that possible is what we call coding, or basically instructions into a computer. In this case, it's one of the smallest computers in the world. It's what we call the Arduino, but basically it's just a very, 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 very small computer. It is programmed with instructions to check the moisture of the soil and to water that soil in coding. So today, I want to talk about coding. So what we're going to do, I'm going to share my screen, and we're going to go to a website called code.org. All of us have played with Legos at some point in our life, some type of building block. The ones I'm familiar with are Legos. There's been all different types and all versions of Legos and all different sizes. And we're familiar with putting blocks together to build something bigger. When we talk about coding, it's the same kind of thing. So I want you guys to um, sit back for a minute because I have some video that uh, will introduce us to coding. And then we will actually do a little bit of coding. Now in this video, the young lady is going to talk about in the next hour, we're not gonna do an hour. We'll break this up into maybe four weeks. We'll, can, we'll figure it out. And basically we're gonna do about 15 minutes. And I think you'll really, really enjoy it. The one that I've chosen is called Dance Party. And basically what it is is either you're going to program a sloth or a cat or bear and different other characters to the point where you have a bunch of characters on the screen and you're programming them to do different things at different times based on instructions that you give. So at the end of this, what my dance party is going to look like should be different from what yours looks like. Even though we're gonna go through the steps together what they tell us to do, you don't have to choose what I choose. I may say I wanted to clap, you might want to do a high clap, you might want to do a step out. Whatever you want your character to do, that's what you should program. But let me share my screen and let me show you the options and the, the possibilities of what we can do. Give me one moment. Hi, my name is Miral Kadhi. I'm a dancer, software developer, and creator of Illuminate. Computer science relates to creativity in numerous ways, immeasurable, really. I mean, once you have the ability to write software, you can put ideas into anything. I do it with light suits. 
there's so much you can do once you have the tools to write software and it's the possibilities are really endless. Over the next hour, you're going to get started with computer science by programming your own dance party. We've assembled some hit music and a team of great dancers for you to play with. You'll be using lots of code to choose different dancers. Change your dance moves, make them respond to the music, and make them interactive. You'll see that your screen is split into three main parts. On the left is a play space. This is where your dancers will show up. The middle area is a toolbox. New blocks of code will be available in this space as you go through the lessons. The space to the right is the workspace. You can drag blocks out of the toolbox and into the workspace to build your program. The instructions for each level will be up here at the top of the screen. If you need a hint, just click the light bulb. To start off, let's make a new dancer with this red box. First, drag it out of the toolbox and snap it under this orange setup block. This dancer is a cat. You can also change where the dancer appears in your play space with this. Above the play space is the menu for picking out music. There are a ton of songs to choose from, so have fun finding your favorites. Under the play space is the run button. When you press run, you'll see the dancers from your program appear in the play space and the music will play. Try it yourself. And if you're feeling stuck, it's okay. Just get up and get moving. <laughs> and before you know it, you'll have made your own dance part. So what will you create? All right, all right, all right. So, um, if uh, Brandon, if you will go, and any of you out there, if you will go to code.org, I'm going to continue to share my screen because I want you to see how we get to uh, where we to, need to get to so we can have fun. So, if you will actually go, if you can see, give me a second, I'm going to remove this and go back to the beginning, and I'm going to put this in the chat. Give me one moment. Mine is slow to catch up. So, to, and I'm gonna go to where we wanna be in the end. Give me a minute. I wanna hide this. Okay, so. Okay. Dance party is where we started. That's where that video came from. Okay. So in the chat, again, I'm going to put, um, how do you get to where I am? So I copy. Okay, and I want us to all go to this particular link. Because again, while I'm sharing my screen and mine is going to look different from yours, I want us all to be starting out at the same place. So if once everybody is there, so figure out how to let me know that you're there. All right, so if you will actually um, click on where it says dance party on the hour of code right here, click on start. We're gonna skip the video because we just watched that video. And we don't need to go through it again. So, and to get to do the actual steps, if you close the video, you can close that down. And then they ask you, how old are you? I'm 12. You'll put in how old you are. And then you simply click okay. And then we have our first things to do. Okay, there, as you said, there is our instructions on the top and we can go ahead and click okay. And then we have our workspace on the left and we can pick whatever song we want by selecting the drop down. Um, I'm fine with Little Nas Out of Town Road. I'm fine with that personally. But again, you choose the song that you like. That's why I said, We'll go through this together, but yours and mine will be different 
when we get to the end. You pick the song that you like. I'm fine with uh, Little Nas. Okay? Then we're simply going to drag this um, task to this arm and set up and let go. And you'll hear me make a little click sound. Okay? So this is, if you were thinking of it in terms of our program, this is our first line of code. Well, you may not be satisfied with it in just the way it appears. Instead of a cat, you might like a sloth. So you choose sloth. It's up to you. And then you can also choose where does it start? It doesn't have to be in the center. You can have it be at the top, the bottom, left, or right. Top, left, top, bottom, top, right, bottom. You choose where you want. You can even have it show up randomly. It's up to you. I'm going to leave mine at the center. And then click on the run in the workspace just to see what yours looks like. Again, if you've chosen to change the slot like I have, or if you've made with a cat, you'll see different things happen. Or if you change the different song, different things will happen for you. As opposed to what happens for me. And once you complete it, as you can see on my screen, you should see the same on your screen. It tells you congratulations. You have finished the, the first puzzle. I don't know the total number of puzzles, but at the end of it, you really have a dance party. So let's go on. So let's click continue. And it's going to then bring up puzzle number two. And actually if we count, it looks like there are about 10 in total. But as I said, we'll do, I'm sorry, as I was saying, um, stop. We will do these in about 15 minutes each time. We're not gonna try to do it all at once. So let's look at puzzle number two and see what we're asked to do. So let's click play and watch the video. And I am a software engineer here at Code.org, and I help to build dance party. To make different dance moves happen at just the right time with the music, you can use something called events. An event tells your program to listen for something to happen and then react right away. Some examples of events are listening for a mouse click, an arrow button, or a tap on the screen. Here, you are going to program a dancer to perform a move when you press the arrow buttons on your screen or the keys on your key. You can use the when up arrow event block and connect a do once block to it. When you press the up arrow key, the code attached to the when up arrow block is run. Which dance move will you choose? Make sure the type of dancer you choose matches one of the dancers you created inside the setup block, or you might not see anything happen. Eventually, you can create more events like this to make your dancers perform different moves with each key. Give it a try, and with a few lines of code, you can make your own interactive dance. Now, this time, as opposed to me showing you what mine looks like, Brandy, you want to share your screen and show us what you come up with? Share your screen. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So go ahead and do, this is the first puzzle. So go ahead and put the block inside the setup so we can go to the next one. Now, if you click run, it'll actually run that for you. Okay. Cute, huh? And that's just with, now mind you, we simplify um, code writing, but this is perfect. So click continue. And it should bring you to puzzle number two. 
Okay, so now we saw this already. So you can go ahead and close this. And as you can see, they've already added when up is pressed. So you can add that. Now, if you look on uh, where it says, it says when up is pressed, then this is what the cat will do. And you see how there is a down arrow on after down. That means you can choose that and make different selections. So this one is if it's up, click the down for a moment. And the one that's still on the, in the uh, workspace. No, that's, that's the, no, all right. Um, underneath blocks, see where it says when down is pressed, see that one? Click on the down. On the, on the look where it says blocks. Down, down a bit, down, come down. Down, come down, no, no, just come, yeah, now move to your left, left. And go up to the green one, perfect. Now, if you click on the down on that block, You'll see the CO, these are all the different options that you have. So you can make it go uh, when you press the left arrow, when you press the right arrow, when you press the down arrow and the up arrow or the space bar or the enter or any of the letters on the, on the keyboard, you can choose. That's why I said at the end of these, what mine looks like and what yours looks like doesn't have to be the same. So show us what you got, show us what you come up with. Because you can add a, wait, hang on. I'm gonna say, you can add, right now, anytime you press the up arrow, he is going to clap. But you can add something to do when you press the left arrow. You can add something to do when you press the right arrow or the down arrow, the space bar, the enter key. Again, all of the characters on your keyboard. So before long, he's rolling all over the floor and doing all different things. Some people are you pressing characters on the keyboard. So that's great. You added one move. He's going to clap when you press the up arrow. You want him to do anything else? Add something else for him to do. So you can see how easy. So if you go back and grab the green bar, yes, and just drag that. Okay. Now drag that whole bar into. Yep, there you go. Come down. Don't nope, come down. Come down. A little bit more. Yeah, so you got to be able to read the codes. Yeah, there you go. Come down a little bit more. There you go. Now, you go back over and then you take the purple bar and you drag that right underneath it. Yep. Now you can decide what he does because he doesn't have to clap. Look, clip on, click on clap and see what options you have. He can do a body roll, he can clap high, he can do disco, he can do a bunch of things. He can kick. You decide what he does. Now, you can't change the character unless that character is somebody who's um, within your dance party already, and we haven't made a, a slot. So the only thing we've made so far is a cat. But now you have it when you press the up arrow, he is going to do a clap. When you press the right arrow, he's going to do something called fresh. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so first show us what happens when you press the up arrow. No, no, no. Tell it, don't, yeah, don't quit just yet. So press the up, um, press the up arrow so you can see what he does. On your keyboard, press the up arrow while he's dancing. Yeah, now press up arrow. What does he do for the up arrow? Let us see that. Okay, and so he's clapping. Okay, I wanted to see what, I wanted to see what fresh looks like. Can we do it one more time? Now press the right arrow so you can see what happens when he does. Um, okay, so that's fresh, that's the right arrow. Okay, excellent. Beautiful. Yes, let's go on to um, puzzle number three. So click on continue. And, and I'm going to go back to sharing my screen.
Okay. Um, we did events already. Okay. Um, I didn't bother. I'm going to just quickly add because I didn't do anything. I'm going to add it up. I'm going to add it down. And when I go down, I don't want it to clap. I liked your idea. Fresh was pretty cool. But then I want a left. Let's do a whole body one. Let's see what that looks like. All right, and for the right. And you can play with these and come up with different combinations, anything that you like. And I recommend that you do that so you become familiar with what the different things do. Because let's see what a bend is. All right, so let me run it. All right, here's up. There's left. Is right. All right, that was pretty cool. I gotta show you down yet though, so hang on. Come on. That's down, up, left, left. All right. And again, you do whatever works for you. This is what um i came up with i'll we're going to continue we're going to do one last one i want you to play with this in your spare time because i and i know you love to play video games imagine if you could write your own video game that's what coding is about learning the particular language for the particular device that you're using and writing code to make it do what you want done writing the instructions to have it do what you need it to do. And it's similar to this, that every um, command has what we call a syntax, how it's read from left to right, and then what are called parameters, things that you can change to do different things, okay? So in this one, we have two characters. We have a cat and we have a bear. That one is gonna start on the right, the other one's gonna start out on the left. And we can do, when we press up, the bear is gonna do something randomly, we have to decide what does a cat do when we press something down. It's time to dance off, program the move when you press different keys. I'm going to just quickly go with the one that they have. Then you can show us what you have decided for yours to do. And that'll be where we stop for today. And we'll continue to program next week until we have a whole dance party. So let's see what happens with mine. I got up and down. Those are my only two choices I've gone with. So run. Go so here's up. And here's down. So they're randomly doing something different, each of them, whether I press up or I press down. The bear moves when I press up and the cat moves when I press down. So share your screen and show us what you came up with. Now, you know, you have to drag the, okay. So you, right now you only have program for the bear. If you're gonna program for the cat, then you have to add the cat to um, our workspace so that we have the cat defined to do something. Um, based on your um, coding. What you had there was just something programmed for the bear. So if you go back to my screen for a moment, if you allow me to. Okay. Right, so they gave us this, um, what the bear is going to do. We had to drag something here for what the cat is going to do. Otherwise, you're just doing something for the bear and the cat is just doing the regular old dance steps. All right, so we don't do anything. The cat is just doing that. 
But because I've defined it, because I've just defined something for the cat, then I can press the um, down arrow and the cat will do something different. I've designed, I've defined something for the bear, so it does something. So um, you need to do that as well, so that each character is doing something. Otherwise, the one of them is just standing, they're just standing there doing the common thing. There's no random to what they do. And that's not really a fun dance party when you stand there, you do the same step the whole, whole night, that's not fun. You wanna be able to branch out and do some different things. Think about uh, what you might do when you're dancing and see if, those, if that particular step is in your options. Because if you look here where it says random, remember we can choose different things that are going to happen and go through each one. See if any of them is a step that you do. And then your person, then your cat or your bear or whatever animal you choose um, is emulating you. It makes it more fun. That makes sense? I hate that we can't just chat, but I'm assuming that you're saying yes. Um, in How are we gonna do homework help? We're gonna figure that out next. Because um, that's all the time we're gonna take for, um, for um, Cyber Street for today. Please join me next week where we'll continue um, our lessons in coding. I am Mr. Williams. I thank you for having joined me. Till next time. Take care.